So the last weeks I've been reading this book called Low Level Programming. This is the book in Portuguese uh, by Igor Zikov. Pretty good guy, pretty good book. Uh, actually, a friend of mine recommended it and I gave it a shot because I've been doing OS dev for like uh, a year now, but I was kind of running away from assembly. I uh, was just sticking to Rust or C, majorly Rust, because that's the language I usually program with. It's my go-to choice for almost everything I do. But I thought it was a good, uh, good uh, may way to actually get away from my comfort zone and give it a shot on something new. So that's why I attempted to read this book. And as you can see, I'm still quite in the beginning of the book, page 56, but there's this assignment. The, the book has a few assignments, a lot of exercises for, for us to do. And one of the exercises is this one in chapter two about writing an IO library. And I find, found it very interesting, to be honest. And I, I thought about recording it because I could think about it and I said that I thought that I could maybe do it all in a video. I'll probably cut up some parts because I'll mess up. I'm new to assembly, so please be patient. But I think it's gonna be a, a good shot for me to uh, actually see my growth as well. So let's get into it. So the first thing we have here is these instructions uh, that he says that we need to build these functions and our library will contain all these functions uh, according to these definitions here that he also passes to us and they're very interesting because well you can actually see how uh, character handling works in low level programming before actually having a high level abstraction in a language such as C for example. So yeah, that's quite interesting, but let's get to it then. So the first thing we gotta do is write an exit function. And he defines it as a function that accepts an exit code and terminates the current process. This exit code that he's talking about generally uh, is related to the process, the syscall or the function or the process that you were executing being successful or not. Generally speaking, when we have a graceful shutdown process, we'll have the code zero on it. So it will be fine on our terminal. But whenever an error occurs or uh, something like that, these value will come different from zero, varying until 255 because it's a eight bit register. So the first thing we gotta be doing here is actually see how this process exiting actually works. And the way that we do that is by doing a, something called system call. So basically, uh, since processes, processes are an abstraction of the operating system, we need to tell the operating system itself that we're terminating that process. And we do that by a system call. So we need a way to execute a system call in assembly. And fortunately, we have a way to do that. This is a system call table for x86 assembly, 64 bit. And here you can see all these uh, syscalls that we have read, write for standard out output. We're going to be using them later on, but we are interested right now in exit. And you can see here that RAX contains the value of the syscall. So you have a syscall table, every operating system has it. I'm talking Linux, of course, and you can see the number. So RAX register gets that number, and you can see it has a maximum five arguments in the system call. That's the maxim maximum it goes to, but uh, usually we don't use all those registers for the system calls that we are interested in right now. So let's get to exit. Let's see what we have to do. So if we come here in 60, if I'm not mistaken, it's the exit system call. And for that, we gotta pass 60, which in hexadecimal is just 3C, but we can pass 60 in binary. It, it will understand since we're using the NASM assembler, it will, will, will get what we mean. 
and here we need to pass the error code and the RDI register. So let's do that in our program. So you can see here I created a file called IOLib assembly file. We're going to test it out. We're going to see what's up. So first thing we got to do is create a text section because all code, everything related to functions, definitions, labels, everything goes into the text section, which is uh, based on our code execution itself. So we create that section right now. And then under section, we can already create our function exit by adding a label to it. And for us to actually write that, as we can go back and see on that system call table, we got to move the value 60 to the RAX registers. So that's what we're going to do right now. So let's move uh, 60 to Rex. And since it's dynamically, we need to pass that value. I'll let the user decide on the main function what value will RDI rece receive so we can return the function itself. So what's going on here? I'm not going to change RDI whatsoever. That's the user decide because we're doing a library that shouldn't be uh, static. It should be dynamic for the user to choose. So we're just gonna call the system call right now. And for us to do that, we just pass that syscall uh, instruction, and then that's it, it's all done. So let us now create a main function to see it executing. For that, we gotta go here to the top of the file and define uh, the main function as start as a global and start is actually the entry point in C calling convention. So we add the label start here to define our main function and we just jump to the exit. We, not, we don't call, we actually have a difference here between jump and call. If you used call here, would have a, a non-empty stack and that would cause us issues since an, an empty stack would uh, give us a seek sieve, which is uh, a signal saying that uh, the memory wasn't uh, terminated correctly because it's there's still things on the stack and for a program to grace gracefully shut down that shouldn't happen the stack should be empty should be all cleared out for it to exit correctly so that's why we use jump we're not actually adding anything to the stack, but when you use call, we're actually expecting a returning value from that function. So that's the difference. So by adding a jump here, that's all done. We can come here and now let's let's test it out. So we're gonna pass NASM, passing our IO library, and load it in lib.io and test it out. I'm a dumbass, I forgot to add uh, the value to RDI, so let's do that. Let's uh, let's say to the main function that we have RDI 3, right? Now our program will work, I'm sorry. My first time, please apologize. So, there we go. The return value is now 3. We didn't have any interrupts or anything like that but you can see there's a three usually when the number is different from zero it means an error so that's why it's looking red-ish uh, used for identifying errors so let's now go to the next function